What's up guys, it's Sergey from Crystal Freediving and today again we're going to talk about breathing for freediving. If you haven't seen my previous video, you can find the link to it in the description below. Uh, on my first video I was talking mainly about like general aspects of breathing, why we're breathing and how we're breathing. If you're interested, uh, you, you haven't seen it before, check, the, uh, check out the link in the description. So today we're going to talk about more specifically about how we breathe in before our breath holds and how we breathe after the breath hold and actually what we're doing during the breath hold. Before we start talking about this guys, if you're new to my channel, please consider the idea to subscribe to it. Here on a weekly basis I'm sharing some freediving information with you guys, uh, just general information like now or some information about freediving training. If you already subscribed to my channel, thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to click the bell button, then the next time when I upload the video, you're going to receive notification. Okay, so breathing for freediving. If you've never done for any freediving before, probably you're thinking, okay, like, whenever you're ready to breath hold, I'm just going to hold it. <gasps> and obviously this is not how it happens. If you haven't done any freediving before, probably you're thinking, okay, when I want to hold my breath, I'm going to do like, <gasps> And then I hold my breath. And obviously this is not how freedivers hold their breath. So before we holding our breath, we have a specific preparation. We call it breathe up, or you can call it relaxation breathing. It's normally about two minutes. It can be slightly longer. It can be maybe three minutes, or it can be smaller. Let's say one minute. It also depends how long you want to hold your breath. So you do relaxation breathing. Uh, what we're trying to achieve here? We're trying to become as much relaxed as possible. There is a different ways how to do relaxation breathing. Might be on a, one of my next videos I'm gonna uh, talk specifically about relaxation breathing. Now at the moment, um, just breathe as much relaxed as possible. Remember how you're breathing before you fall asleep? This is a perfect way how to do relaxation breathing. Just slowly breathe in, slowly breathe out, Try to relax all the muscles on your face, on your shoulders, your chest muscles, your abdominals, your arms and legs. So try to get as much relaxation as possible. So after about two, maybe three minutes of relaxation breathing, you're going to do big breath in and you're going to hold your breath. And here is the first mistake that happens. Uh, this is what quite often happens when the beginner freedivers hold their breath. They do big breath in and then they tense. And then they tense. And again, if you haven't seen my previous videos, please check, the, uh, check out the link in the description below. When you tense your muscles, you're going to produce much more carbon dioxide and then you're going to start uh, having arch to breathe much earlier. So you want to start breathing much earlier. So you, if you want to have a longer, nice, uh, comfortable breath hold to make sure that you relax your muscles when you're holding your breath. This is what I actually like recommend to do when you're holding your breath. Like scan your body and check what kind of muscles relax. Because like sometimes, uh, let's say the beginner free diver, they do breathe in and they hold the arms like this. And this is obviously not relaxed position. So I'm telling them, okay, relax your arms, relax your shoulders, relax your chest muscles then they can become more loose, more relaxed. So this is what you want to do when you start holding your breath. You want to do big breath in, take as much air as possible, um, maybe not actually 100%, maybe like 80% from your maximum inhale, and then hold your breath and try to be as much relaxed as possible. So when you finish your breath hold, here we have a really important part, part we call it recovery breathing. So how it looks like. I'm gonna hold my breath for five seconds and then do my recovery. So what I'm doing, I quickly inhale and then I passively exhale. There is, some people do recovery breath with a hook, so it like, and you hold it for a second and then you passively exhale, like, it's more like a preference. So some people just inhale and exhale, some people inhale, hold it for a second, then passively exhale. So why we call it recovery? Because we, tr we try to recover the level of oxygen as quickly as possible. Obviously, when you hold your breath, your body is still operating and you're still consuming the oxygen from your lungs, from your blood, from your muscles. 
and then when you stop holding your breath you want to recover this level of oxygen as quickly as possible to avoid any problems in the future uh, so for example if you're holding your breath for 10 seconds do you really need to do recovery or for 20 seconds or for 30 seconds high chances that the level of oxygen is not that low to do anything however it's it might be true but by doing recovery every single time when you finish your breath hold, you're going to cre create some good habit. And in the future, when you actually hold your breath for a long period of time, you, not, you don't need to think, okay, how am I going to do my recovery? You're just doing it. You're just doing it automatically. Okay? So we're going to do recovery breath every single time when you hold your breath. Just make it as a good habit. All right, relaxation breathing before the breath hold, recovery breathing after the breath hold. So recovery, because we want to recover the level of oxygen as quickly as possible, and relaxation because we want to have our muscles completely relaxed. Okay, what we are doing while we're holding our breath. So like I said, while we're holding our breath, we try to make our muscles as much relaxed as possible, our body loose, relaxed, and you enjoy your breath hold experience. However, somewhere in the middle of your breath hold, maybe not in the middle, like somewhere after you start holding your breath, you're going to start feeling uncomfortable sensation in your diaphragm or somewhere in your chest. Again, I was explaining in my previous video why this happens. This is what we call arch to breathe. This is a when your CO2 level reach, when your CO2 reach some level and then your brain sends the signal for your respiration muscles let's get rid of this carbon dioxide and this is where it starts to be a little bit uncomfortable so on the first level and probably on the second uh, when i'm teaching first or second level students we normally try to stay like in this part okay in part number one it is a really nice part this is where you really relax you really enjoy this experience however there is a still part number two when you have a contractions and this is the less enjoyable part. Like I said, on the first level specifically, we mainly stay within the first zone and might even have a small experience with this part as well. So if, let's say, you practice on your own, and don't forget, this is a good topic, if you practice on your own, you never practice it in the water. If you want to practice breath hold in the water, in the swimming pool or in the sea, you have to have free diving body. There's no exception, zero exception. So if, let's say, you want to practice now at home after watching my videos, if you want to make it longer, you can keep your contractions for a while. What you want to do when you have contractions? You still want to be as much relaxed as possible. So let's say maybe after 40 seconds you have a small movement of the diaphragm, remind yourself that this is just high level of carbon dioxide, not low oxygen, you are not in danger, and try to still be relaxed. Maybe you can experience second or third contractions, and then stop holding your breath, do your recovery, uh, do your relaxation, hold your breath again. Again, if you are a beginner freediver, and high chances that you're watching my video and you're a beginner freediver, don't make it really hard. Don't do a lot of contractions. Make your experience nice and enjoyable. This is a better way how to start doing free diving. To do like, this part mainly. So the contractions can be somewhere in the middle of your ability to hold your breath. Again, this is not proven fact. Some people can have a contractions much later. Some people can have a contractions much early. Uh, but in general, it's somewhere in the middle of your ability to hold your breath. Let's say if you have a contractions after one minute, it probably means that you can hold your breath safely one minute more. However, again, I am not recommend you to have a lot of contractions if you're a beginner freediver. When you have a first one, maybe you can wait a few seconds more and then stop holding your breath, do your recovery, relaxation, and if you want, you can repeat it few times.